right, welcome to the Collecting Track panels. Uh, today we're going to have yeah, we're going to have um, an interesting panel. Going to uh, introduce the speaker shortly, but um, I want to encourage you guys if you've been collecting Star Tots, we're going to give away all the leftover Star Tots at five o'clock today. Uh, in fact, you might want to get here a little earlier than five because people start queuing up even before the last panel ends. But you can also see the last panel and line up. And what we'll do is just give them away till we're done with them. And we have extras of every single star tot, so we'll let people go through a few times if, if you know, while supplies last. Uh, also, uh, I want to encourage you guys. You've been seeing these videos in front of the panels where we have different uh, local clubs. Uh, that present, you know, that talk about you know, either the charities they're doing or different activities they're doing. A lot of them have booths down on the exhibitor floor, so I encourage you to go meet with them. Many people don't realize that there are a lot of collecting clubs all around the world, and even if there's not one represented in your area downstairs, they may know of other clubs in your area. And I, you know, I feel very strongly about like collecting is a big part of. Uh, a big part of it is the social aspect of it and, and interfacing with other collectors, whether it's like internationally in, in, a, in a specialized area or whether it's locally with other like-minded collectors. So for our next topic, uh, this is one we've had, uh, we've brought back to the collecting track and a very exciting topic and, and uh, Christy has, has, has updated it for this celebration and I want to um, introduce our speaker, Christy Glasgow is going to talk about collecting Star Wars fashion. Hey everyone, a um, little nervous. Um, welcome to the Collecting Star Wars Fashion Panel. Thanks for all being here. Um, I run the women's Star Wars fashion website, The Kessel Runway. Um, it's been great to see just how much Star Wars fashion has been available at this convention and how many fans have been wearing awesome Star Wars fashion. I presented my first panel at Celebration Orlando in 2017 where I talked about many different brands and a little bit of the history of women's Star Wars fashion. As a bit of a follow-up for this panel, I will be taking a look at a wide range of aspects of collecting Star Wars fashion, broken down into three main topics. Collecting as a fashion, uh, collecting fashion as a focus, uh, self-expression and identity, and sources of Star Wars fashion. In this first section, we'll be focusing on fashion as a collecting focus. So what makes Star Wars fashion collecting unique compared to other aspects of Star Wars collecting? I'll also talk about the decisions between collecting versus wearing, the storage of fashion items as wearable items that are both in use and collectibles, and we'll touch on modifying and upcycling and where the line is drawn between customising for use and damaging a collectible. And lastly, sentimental fashion items and how we can include our love of Star Wars in some important events in our lives. So what makes fashion different to other collectibles? There is a wide variety available now, but the very nature of fashion items is that they perform a function. Some examples here are Princess Leia and Jaina Solo collectibles by Funko and Kotobukiya, beside handbags that are based off the similar costume designs by Heroes and Villains and Loungefly. The collectibles are easy to collect and store, as they will sit on a shelf and remain mostly untouched. We all know to keep collectibles safe and out of sunlight, but how do you protect items that are designed to be worn, used, and taken outside on a daily basis? Here are a couple of examples of different fashion items with an added level of complexity to deal with in terms of use versus collectability. Last year, her universe released a Star Wars makeup collection that included lip gloss, an eyeshadow palette, and makeup brushes. The brushes can be used without using them up. You just need to clean them and keep them cared for, and they should last well enough. But the makeup, on the other hand, that will get used up and will, in an essence, no longer exist once you've finished it. As you can see, I've yet to use mine. <laughs> the same goes for other Star Wars makeup collections most notably those by CoverGirl and Cargo Cosmetics, and a range of other cosmetic items like temporary tattoos by Love and Madness and the Star Wars Nail Art by Jamboree. These are items I would love to be able to use as part of my daily makeup routine, but for me personally, these were hard to find and I had to import them from overseas, meaning I only have a very limited supply of them that would run out quickly if I used them every day. I've also collected Star Wars perfumes made by several different companies, 
These ones are themed to female Star Wars characters, including Rey, Queen Amidala, and Princess Leia. I have worn these perfumes once each, and while I'm hesitant to use them again, knowing that each use is using them up. While the bottoms themselves are beautiful and will dis display fine on a shelf, and even though I may never wear them again, I still like knowing they're there rather than empty and I can no longer enjoy the scent. And they are beautiful perfumes to wear. I, may it's, I know it may seem counterintuitive to buy makeup and perfume and not use them, but for me, these are limited collectibles that are part of a wider range of Star Wars fashion that won't be made again, and so I have chosen to keep them as collectibles rather than everyday use, but that's just me. As some of you may know, Star Wars jewellery is amongst the very first Star Wars merchandise to be made dating back to 1977. Jewellery is designed to be worn, and I've tried to collect as much vintage jewellery as I can. Some of the items, like the Empire Strikes Back range of necklaces, are easy to remove from their blue boxes. You simply lift off the clear window and take the necklace off the backing card, and you can easily put the necklace back in its box and return it to its original packaged condition. Some items, you cannot do this. You have to choose between keeping it as an original vintage carded item or permanently removing the item from its packaging. For an example, here is a Wicket necklace on a backing card from 1983. The bubble is lifting slightly, the card has bends and a tear on the front, and I purchased it for one dollar. The purchase price reflects this isn't a particularly rare or sought after item, especially considering its condition. So it's a good example of a situation where you have to decide if you want to keep the item carded as a collectible, considering it's vintage, or would you remove the item and wear it? Does it have more value to you as a sealed collectible or a jewelry item you can wear and love? It can be a tricky decision. Speaking of packaging, uh, here are some examples of some of the Star Wars fashion items I have. Uh, on the left, these are just some of my Star Wars jewellery boxes. I just can't get rid of them. <laughs> I know they're not vintage items, but they're still Star Wars, and the jewellery is easy to put back in its box, so it feels like it's part of the collectible nature of the item. Shoe boxes can be tricky as well. Here are two of mine, the tidy and pristine Pozu box next to my recent Inca's box, which unfortunately got crumpled in the mail. Shoes are one item that I quite frequently like to keep with their box, even when they're not collectible, my regular shoes. It's like buying an action figure to keep on its card only to arrive bent, and we're probably all familiar with those horror stories. Not that it affects the functions of the shoes in any way, but it's sad to see such well-designed Star Wars packaging get damaged. Perhaps I need, just need to buy another pair. <laughs> <laughs> Many collectors will be aware of the damage that sunlight can do to plastic, but fabrics can also discolour over time. One of my most expensive Star Wars fashion items is the white-collared Darth Vader shirt by Preen by Thornton Bregazzi. I've never been brave enough to wear this white shirt, so it still has its tag attached. To avoid marks, I've kept it in the box it arrived in, wrapped in white tissue paper. And as you may see in the photo of the front, the printed fabric has turned a slight yellow shade, especially when compared to the plain, unprinted fabric of the back. This shirt has barely been out of its box, but it has unfortunately changed a little with age, even before I've had the chance to wear it. To be fair, I did buy this more as a collectible and more than an everyday item, considering it was nearly $500. But it is a shame to see that it's changed from its original condition, despite my best efforts to keep it neat and tidy. Another aspect of collecting Star Wars fashion is the delicate nature of fabric. Despite our best efforts, fabric will always remain susceptible to damage while wearing, and sometimes even when not being worn. This Ray-inspired cape has textured outer fabric and closes with Velcro tabs. When worn open, the Velcro tabs easily snag the fabric, meaning, sadly, my one got snagged in my shopping bag at the event before I could even wear it. Granted, this isn't an expensive item, but nonetheless disappointing to see it damaged like this. If you've ever watched a documentary about fashion, they often show the extraordinary care and methods of storage they use for handling designer garments, even if they're only a few years old. Fabric absorbs sweat and oils, and washing can further damage fabrics. It's a tricky balance. Because fashion has a function, we sometimes end up modifying items to better suit our needs. 
There are times when I find a necklace pendant I absolutely love, but the chain or the length just doesn't suit me. Thankfully, jewellery links are easy to open and remove a pendant from its original chain and reattach it to a different necklace. Here are two examples from my own collection where I took the pendants off and put them on a different hoop-style necklace. On some occasions, I've found pendants that I thought would make for good earrings, like this lightsaber pendant off a necklace by Loungefly. While the necklace was on sale, I purchased two additional necklaces and carefully removed the lightsaber pendant and put them on jewellery hooks to create a matching set. Thankfully, you can edit jewellery in this manner and still be able to revert it back to its original state. These vintage C-3PO dangle earrings originally came on clip-on earrings, which were much more common in the 1970s. Carefully opening the jewellery ring attachments, I was able to attach the dangle sculpted part to modern pierced ear hooks so I can wear these beautiful sculpted earrings. In fact, I wore these at a previous celebration convention to meet Anthony Daniels. He noticed them and we talked for a bit. It was a great little moment. While we can edit jewellery easily, altering garments on the other hand, that's not usually such a reversible process. I often find a t-shirt or fabric print that I love, but it's not a woman's cut. Sometimes all it takes is a pair of scissors to alter a men's t-shirt into a woman's tank top, like the one on the left here. Sometimes I've taken men's garments completely apart to use the fabric to sew a completely new item, like this shirt I made from fabric that was originally men's sleep pants. With this type of alteration, I generally only use items that are cheap, on sale, clearance, or not particularly rare and vintage, as it's a, quite a destructive type of alteration. Of course, once you purchase an item, it's yours to do with as you please, but I try to be careful not to destroy something special. Cutting up Star Wars, vintage Star Wars bedsheets for a dress fabric feels a bit like opening carded figures. You're forever altering its existence, especially when there can be easier alternatives to use. With a growing range of Star Wars footwear available now, I find myself having to make tough decisions about how much I can wear my Star Wars shoes before I worry about damaging them. With regular shoes, I tend to wear them until they wear out, as I'm sure many of us do. But when it comes to Star Wars shoes, I've been rather hesitant to wear them as much as I would like. Examples in, in here include Irregular Choice, Sperry, and Vans, which were all made in limited amounts, and they can't be easily replaced or cheaply replaced. Sometimes I think I'll save them to wear at a Star Wars convention, but then I remember the huge amount of time we all spend on our feet at these events. It's something I struggle with. In fact, some designs from their regular choice footwear collections have specific features that will be damaged, destroyed, or simply worn out with use. Many of the pairs featured a colored print on the soles, which can only be protected by applying an additional protective plastic layer, which protects it well enough, but does alter the shoes from their original condition. Some pairs also featured lights and sounds, like these lightsaber heels which activate when you wear the shoes and take strides. This is a super cool feature, but they involve fixed batteries on the insides that only last so long and will eventually stop working. Not that they don't look cool by themselves, but it is a little sad that this feature is essentially time limited. Many children's shoes include lights and sounds, but kids generally grow out of shoes, so it's not much of an issue. And those don't cost as much as these ones. The aspect of storing fashion has both positive and negatives. Every house already has places for storing clothes, like your drawers or a wardrobe. As anyone who has a collection of action figures will know, finding space to store or display collectibles can be an issue. It's not uncommon to hear stories of collectors renovating their house to build more rooms for their Star Wars displays. But with clothes, we generally already have a space, even in the smallest apartment. With my clothes, I with my Star Wars ones, I particularly try to be more careful and actually fold up them when I put them in my drawer rather than throwing them in. And I take careful consideration with my hangers to make sure that the shoulders don't stretch, especially. One of my favourite quotes from the movie The Devil Wears Prada is by the character Nigel talking about fashion. He says, you live your life in it. Whether we think about it or not, the clothes we wear often have sentimental value as they remind us of places and times when we wore them. There are many examples we can use Star Wars fashion as a sentimental keepsake, most obviously Star Wars events and conventions like this one. 
whether it's a souvenir bought from a place or a specific event, these items will always be special because of the memories associated with them, even if we didn't specifically wear them at the event. My Princess Leia t-shirt from Celebration 3 in 2005 is well worn and loved, but it's a special souvenir from my first ever Star Wars Celebration convention. It's something I'll never throw out, even if I never wear it again. Life is full of examples when jewellery is used to convey meaning or connection with somebody. Whether it's an engagement ring or a best friend's necklace set, there are many examples of Star Wars jewellery that can hold additional special meaning. Designs like the Haitian smelt necklace set already has inbuilt meaning because of the close relationship between the sisters Rose and Paige Tico, making this set the perfect subtle sentimental jewellery piece to share with a loved one. There are also many fun friend style necklace sets celebrating friendship, in this case inspired by R2-D2 and C-3PO. At the higher end of the price range, K Jewelers in the past has also released a beautiful range of Star Wars jewellery with precious metals and stones, the perfect gift for the Star Wars fan in your life. There were many designs that would have made the perfect engagement ring. The sales one also has a fantastic range of Star Wars jewellery available, including rings and necklaces, and they have a booth here at the stand as well. Here are a couple of examples of Star Wars sentimental fashion from my own wardrobe. I was gifted this Star Wars garter, which I wore on my wedding day. It was also my something blue, and a TIE fighter print dress that my daughter wore to her high school prom. These are both significant occasions in our lives, and it was really special to be able to include Star Wars details in these outfits, particularly because what we wear on our wedding day or prom is so closely linked to our memories of that day. Had there been more Star Wars fashion available back then, I know I would have worn more for my wedding day. I've seen a regular choice Star Wars shoes worn by brides under their dresses, and there is so much beautiful Star Wars jewellery available now. With the growth of Star Wars fashion availability, it now covers every age, starting right from birth. With the generations of fans who grew up with Star Wars now having kids of their own, it's the perfect time to include Star Wars fashion in those early days of your child's life. Many parents, myself included, love to share their love of Star Wars with their child. I also keep baby clothes as sentimental keepsakes from when they were young. My daughter loves Star Wars, and even though she, of course, is now too old to wear her baby clothes, she has so many fond memories of these, especially these T-shirts that she wore when she was three, even though she couldn't actually watch Revenge of the Sith at the time. Taking the sentimental approach even further, the brand Cub Coats makes children's Star Wars sweatshirts that transform into cuddly toys. The current range includes Chewbacca and Darth Vader. They're such a cute and creative item that is sure to become a very sentimental childhood item. They have a booth here as well. While many of us may not think too much about the clothes we wear each day, they do carry a lot of meaning, reminding us of the times we wore them, just as we remember our favourite childhood toys. If you've ever watched the Marie Kondo Tidying Up series, you'll see just how hard it can be to let go of clothing, because it reminds us so much of people, places and times in our lives. Moving on to self-expression and identity. As the famous fashion magazine editor Nina Garcia once said, style is a deeply personal expression of who you are, and every time you dress, you are asserting a part of yourself. The clothes we wear are part of our personal identity, how we present ourselves to the world. So it makes sense that as Star Wars fans, we enjoy sharing that passion with others by showing it with our apparel. Whether it's a casual t-shirt we throw on for running errands, or a full, awesome, themed ensemble for a convention, there are many ways we can use Star Wars fashion to express ourselves, no matter your own personal tastes or style. We'll take a look at fashion as a form of self-expression, apparel as a human need, Star Wars fashion as a hobby relevant for every fan, style as a part of personal identity, and inspiration and influences. Fashion style is a very personal thing. Whether we realise it or not, we will always be drawn to specific items and styles when browsing at a store, even if we can't articulate why we like a particular item over another. One particular aspect of Star Wars fashion I often hear is the preference for bold versus subtle branding. Some people really enjoy Star Wars fashion for its bold designs, letting others clearly know you love Star Wars. Others may prefer the subtle, inspired designs, 
that you know are Star Wars, but may fly under the radar to the casual observer. Here are a few of my favorite examples of bold versus subtle. This chunky stormtrooper necklace covered in rhinestones will let everyone know you're a Star Wars fan. Very much in contrast to the subtle three-tiered necklace with its petite little rebel bird and tiny Star Wars logo. You can also apply the same preferences to garments. Here are two pairs of leggings from Therese. One is completely covered in Darth Vader helmets, while the other is mostly plain back, but with a small panel at the ankles with a constellation-inspired print. Only when you look closely do you spot the Star Wars elements in amongst the stars. There is a small Rebel Bird logo and a BB-8-shaped constellation design. The Darth Vader leggings are an obvious Star Wars branded items, while the constellation leggings are not nearly so overt. Beyond Star Wars branding, there is, of course, the strong component of personal style. Whether you wore dresses and have a softer feminine style, or whether you prefer dark colors and a bit more of a rock and roll edge, there are ways to include Star Wars in your wardrobe. Of course, you may be like me and enjoy having a wide range of styles in your wardrobe to suit any day. It's fun to mix it up sometimes. With the huge array of Star Wars fashion available now, there are endless ways to include Star Wars in your outfit. Whether it's a silk Darth Vader shirt to pair with skirt and heels, or a casual Star Wars t-shirt with jeans and sneakers, there's so much to choose from. Star Wars fashion has grown so much beyond just the t-shirts of the old days. And I love variety. I love to choose outfits based on my personal style, or just day-to-day -day different styles. Style is so personal. There is no right or wrong way to celebrate Star Wars with your wardrobe. Sadly, I often hear the phrase, you don't want to look like Star Wars threw up on you. <laughs> but really, who cares? If you love it, then wear it. Don't let anyone feel like you can't wear Star Wars fashion that you love it. If you want to wear logos on every part of your body with rhinestones and glow-in-the-dark logos, then just go for it. If you prefer the subtle route with inspired designs that reference characters and costumes, then that's awesome too. Don't let anyone make you feel bad for celebrating Star Wars the way you want to. Go out there and rock your look with pride, celebrating the films we all love. If you like to put together inspired items, there are a few found items that you can include in your look for a subtle Star Wars touch. Most notably is the silver jewelry by Laponia that Carrie Fisher wore as Leia in the Yavin medal ceremonies. I've only been able to afford the bracelet, the necklace is on my dream list. Due to demand, these vintage jewelry designs are once again available to buy directly from the jeweler. Although as large silver items, they are certainly at the higher end of the price range. For those on a budget, these geometric silver cuffs are often available on cheap websites like Wish for just a few dollars each, and they're exactly the same as the ones worn by Emmeline Holdo in The Last Jedi. Speaking of budgets, Star Wars collecting is often seen as an expensive hobby, and it certainly can be. If you're on a limited budget, it can sometimes be hard to justify buying collectibles. But fashion is a human need. We all require basics like socks and underwear. So we have a reason to buy Star Wars ones. If you have to buy them anyway, why not buy the Star Wars ones? In many instances, we can find Star Wars fashion at similar prices to regular items. For, so for me, the choice is easy. I'll always take the Star Wars ones. Unlike some other areas of Star Wars collecting, like props or statues, Star Wars fashion can be enjoyed on a very small budget and with very small storage space, making it an easy gateway into Star Wars collecting. Anyone can do it. Regardless of where you live, there is Star Wars fashion to suit the weather of your hometown. From summer beach time wear, like swimsuits and sunglasses, through to cold climates like knitted jumpers and thermal jackets, there is Star Wars fashion appropriate for all climates all year round. I particularly like Star Wars fashion for summer. It's the perfect opportunity to celebrate Star Wars while on vacation, and there's a growing range of swimwear options from brands like Black Milk Clothing and Mustard Brand. Vacations are just for you, and I love the freedom to wear as much Star Wars as I like while on holiday. Whether or not you can wear Star Wars fashion to work, whether you have to wear a uniform or a suit and tie, there's a variety of Star Wars accessories you can incorporate into your wardrobe. From the classics like socks and underwear that are hidden under your outfit, to subtle jewelry 
and cufflinks and ties. These are great ways to add your personality to your work attire and express yourself every day. One significant part of our personal identities are the communities we belong to. Within the wider Star Wars fan community, there are many clubs and groups representing many different aspects of the fandom. Perhaps some of the most well-known of these are the costuming clubs, like the Rebel Legion and the 501st Legion. As we have seen around the convention floor, when not in costume, many members wear club apparel and accessories as an identifier, showing their affiliation to the club and celebrating the role that that community has in their life. Even if you don't belong to a specific club, you belong to the family of Star Wars fans, and wearing Star Wars fashion shows you're a part of that community. I've seen many people strike up conversations with others while waiting in line based on something they had on, like a shirt or a pin. It's an icebreaker, a commonality that helps us connect with other like-minded people, a way of showing who you are without having to speak. Personally, I'm also a big Star Wars video game fan, particularly of the Star Wars The Old Republic. As a daily player, Swotor plays a big part of my love of Star Wars, and I celebrate that with my wardrobe. It's been a few years since Swotor apparel was available to buy direct, but I've tracked down as many of their swag giveaway tees on eBay as I can. And I was excited to add a new tee to my collection at the Swotor event here on Saturday night. As functional apparel, clothing has to suit not only our personal tastes, but the roles and tasks we have to perform that day. Whether you're a doctor or working out at the gym, there are ways to incorporate your love of Star Wars into the role attire for every situation. There are even Star Wars scrubs for hospital workers available on Amazon. I think that's neat. For me, Star Wars is filled with positive messages, and the one place I can always use a bit of positive inspiration is in the gym. From Yoda's Jedi wisdom, do or do not, there is no try, to words of motivation about Rey, Wearing Star Wars apparel for my workouts, particularly ones with inspirational quotes, gives me the extra boost and motivation as if I am a Jedi in training. It works too if you're on the dark side. I love my rule the galaxy tea for days I'm feeling a little bit more Sith. Star Wars quotes are popular themes for Star Wars jewelry, from the classic, may the force be with you, to never tell me the odds. There is something very special about looking down at my wrist for words of wisdom during the day. One of my absolute favourites is the Princess Leia-inspired bracelet by Lillian & Co, with just a simple word, hope. Beyond the meaning of the individual quotes, just having a touch of Star Wars with me wherever I go always brings a smile to my face when I need it most. Star Wars has been such a positive influence in my life, and I carry reminders of that with me every day with my wardrobe and accessories. For many fans, the inspiration we find from the Star Wars characters extends beyond the screen to the actors and actresses themselves. In particular for me, this includes Amelia Clarke, Daisy Ridley, and Natalie Portman. These leading ladies are fashion icons in their own right, as well as the characters they portray, which adds another layer of inspiration to the character theme, fashion, and accessories. <coughs> many of the Star Wars actresses have fronted campaigns for major fashion and beauty labels, as well as appearing in fashion magazines. While many of us may not be able to afford the fashion of these brands or the, from the stuff worn in magazines, they still serve as inspiration. In particular, Natalie Portman has been Miss Dior since 2010, beginning with the Miss Dior perfume campaign and more recently as the face for Dior makeup. In particular, the Rouge lipstick collection. The lipstick collection particularly stands out as Natalie wears their signature 999 red shade, which for me has a strong connection to the iconic makeup she wore as Queen Amidala. This isn't the makeup brand she wore in the film, but when I wear this red shade as the same as Natalie, I feel it is as if something Padme herself might have worn. It isn't Star Wars branded, but the connection is there and it feels special. Of course, the more obvious way of celebrating our favourite characters and actors is to wear fashion highlighting or featuring them. Here's a few of my favourite characters and themed fashion items. The first, of course, is Daisy Ridley as Rey. Here is a top by Black Milk Clothing and a necklace by Sales One. There is a huge array of Rey-themed fashion available, which is great, and I can't wait to see the designs that will be available for Episode 9. There is not as much Padme-themed fashion as I and many others believe there should be, so I try to collect it whenever I can. Padme is such a style icon, as is Natalie Portman. They are both accomplished women and role models, and wearing Padme fashion helps inspire me. 
This first T-shirt is by We Love Fine, while the second shirt was from Forever 21, with a Padme-inspired Nabu symbol cardigan by her universe. And of course, we can't talk about female Star Wars characters without including Princess Leia and Carrie Fisher. Let's see if I can get through this without crying. Leia is especially significant for me. I met Carrie Fisher a number of times, and I try to collect as much Leia fashion as I can. Wearing it reminds me of the strength and hope of both Carrie and Leia, and celebrates so much of what I love about Star Wars. In situations where I feel like a more subtle inspiration, I look to symbols that represent Leia. In A New Hope, Leia wears silver jewelry and accessories with her white dress. So for me, a rebel silver bird is always synonymous with Leia. In the new sequel films, Leia wears a distinctive ring, which is now available as a licensed replica version by Sales One. Wearing this ring makes me feel like I have a connection to Leia by wearing the same jewellery as her, and it's the perfect subtle piece I can wear anywhere. Since Carrie Fisher passed away, symbols of Leia now have greater meaning for many of us. Many fans remember her sharing glitter with fans at conventions, and it has inspired the moment Glitter for Carrie in her memory. For her birthday last year, my daughter and I celebrated her legacy by combining silver glitter with layered-inspired touches, such as a classic bun hairstyle and ribble symbol. Not technically a fashion item, but hairstyles are such a great finishing touch to an outfit, and are particularly fitting since Leia herself had such iconic hairstyles. As well as taking inspiration from specific characters, I personally find great significance in the love stories of Star Wars. Star Wars is how I met my husband, and we got engaged at the filming location of Anakin and Padme's wedding in Italy. Sadly, there isn't as much fashion inspired by the love story in episode two, so these particular items hold special significance for me. The first is a limited edition t-shirt from Shop Disney, while the second is a costume-inspired piece by the fan label Al Hoffa Design. And of course, I had to buy the gorgeous new Padme dress and sweatshirt by her universe. Moving on to sources of Star Wars fashion. While most of us usually buy our regular clothing at a local store, Star Wars fashion tends to be more widespread in availability, and it can be quite the adventure to collect. While online shopping is accessible, it does add complexities when combined with the collectible nature of Star Wars items. In this segment, we'll look at the rise and growth of Star Wars fashion companies, collectible brands versus mass market, apparel sizing, exclusive items and accessibility, and fan-made fashion. There are so many companies producing licensed Star Wars fashion, I can't cover them all, but I just want to highlight two of my recent favorites. And not surprisingly, they are footwear brands. I love shoes, so I'm happy to see so many options available for both men and women. One of my favorite Star Wars fashion companies is the ethical footwear brand Pozu. Keen-eyed fans identified the footwear on display as part of Ray's costume at Celebration Anaheim, and due to demand, the company reissued that specific style of boot. From there, they launched a full licensed collection of replica footwear and costume-inspired designs, and have continued to expand their range with fabulous sneakers for both men and women. They are well known for their incredible comfort, which is great for when you want to wear Star Wars shoes all day at a convention. Also on the footwear market is the brand Inkers. One of my favorite designs is from their latest collection. These shoes feature a repeating print of the leading ladies of Star Wars, Queen Amidala, Princess Leia, and Rey. They also have a booth here at the con. I'm so happy to see Queen Amidala featured on shoes. I hope we see more. As with other areas of Star Wars collecting, some brands and items are highly sought after, while others tend to linger around. I'll take a look at a couple of notable fan favorite brands and what makes them so popular. A personal favorite of mine is the Australian clothing label Black Milk Clothing. I'd been a fan of their range for quite some time, so it was exciting when they announced a full licensed Star Wars apparel collection in 2012. The collection was primarily aimed at women, with a range that included leggings, dresses, swimsuits, and bodysuits. The collection was so popular, it was unfortunately widely available from knockoff sources. Flash forward to 2018, when Black Milk suddenly launched a brand new collection, including pieces inspired by the new sequel trilogy. This time, there were many more unisex pieces and a greater range of prints and styles. But Black Milk had grown so popular that the website crashed for over an hour with the launch, and they had to expand their range amounts to cope 
there are still a handful of pieces, and it was great to see a brand react to demand. UK-based footwear brand Irregular Choice also saw a frenzied release for their Star Wars footwear collections. This is another brand that I've long admired, so I knew I had to grab as many pairs as soon as I could, but I did not expect the rush on release. The R2-D2 shoes from the first collection on the left sold out direct within 15 minutes. The collection included really unique elements, such as, as light-up lightsaber heels and sculpted character heels, and some even play sounds as you walk. It's not surprising that since their first collection did so well, they created a second collection with a fresh take on some of their most popular designs, like the R2-D2 shoes on the right. I couldn't help it, I needed both. Like all areas of Star Wars collecting, sometimes it can be hard to discern which items will sell out quickly and what will linger. Some of my favorite shirts are just from department stores that are just around for ages, and it's a shame that they don't seem to get the attention that some of the other more high-profile brands do. For example, these are two dresses inspired by The Last Jedi that were sold by ASOS. The one on the left is inspired by the gold of Canto Bight and the black and white of the First Order on the right. These are very unique prints and garment construction styles. In particular, the First Order dress has frilled elements that is very rarely seen in Star Wars fashion. These dresses took over a year to sell out, and while ASOS is a major international brand, it's hard to say just how stock was made. But it's an interesting case that affordable designer looks like these didn't get the same fan attention as other brands. I'd love to see more dresses like these. Buying Star Wars collectibles, many of us know the panic of trying to buy online quickly before an item sells out, but Star Wars fashion has the added complexity of sizing. Most often the collectible and highly desirable items are launched online, which means fans don't get the chance to try them on. Sizing will change between brands and, and they have different quantities to match with the popular sizes. It can be frustrating not wearing a common size and finding yours is the one that sells out first. Do you buy a different size or do you miss out? These are dilemmas that are quite unique to fashion collecting that you don't need to worry about for hobbies such as action figures. Sadly, sometimes designs are not made in a full size range, so there are fans that just miss out completely. And I think Star Wars fashion should be all inclusive. So here, are, for an example, are two women's t-shirts. The dark blue one in the back is an extra small, while the red one is an extra small, uh, medium, sorry. They're both women's garments, but the fit is completely different. This variance can make buying online tricky, especially when it comes to popular designs that sell out quickly. I know for certain releases, I've ended up buying two because I really did not want to miss out and find that the size that I chose wasn't the right one and that it had sold out in the meantime. We're all familiar with the concept of limited edition collectibles, but that can take on a different meaning when it comes to fashion. For a simple item like a handbag, if there's 600 of them, that means you've got 600 chances to buy it. On the other hand, when it comes to garments, edition sizes mean a very different thing. So say a jacket's made in a thousand edition size, but it'll come in five different sizes. So that means really, for your size, there's only 200 available, and that's suddenly a lot less. There are also added complexities in additions and sizing. For example, the Vans footwear range, it's unisex, which means that for women like myself with smaller feet, it was a lot harder to find pairs in my size. The men's sizes were easier to find. The Adidas Star Wars collection included a Princess Leia sneaker. At the time, there was only one store in my country, and they didn't have my size. So I had a friend in Australia find a pair at her store and sent them to me. We're all familiar with convention exclusives, but some have also released convention variants. For example, these are two convention variants by Loungefly, the pink Stormtrooper clutch and the Ray bag. At first, it appeared as if the Ray bag was a convention exclusive, but it turned out it was just a variant. Basically, the pin was the only thing that was unique to the convention. 
this wasn't clear at the time and it led to a bit of a frenzy of people trying to get their hands on it. And as it turned out, it was widely available online after the event. One particular exclusive item that I quite like is jewellery. It's easy to carry around all day and packs well in your suitcase. I like t-shirts that have a date on the front and branding. These ones tend to be on the back and it's subtle, you can wear it all the time. With so many amazing characters in Star Wars, we often find some of our favourite characters aren't featured on apparel as often as we would like. This is where fan designs really fill in the gaps. Here's are some, some of my favourite Padme designs by Fashion for Fans and Al Hoffa Design. As I've said, I try to collect as much Padme stuff as I can find. And some other rarer characters like Basin Natal, all the popular characters like Han Solo. There's some really great costume inspired designs. These ones are by Prophecy Girl, Gold Bubble Clothing, and Sent from Mars. With easy access to custom metal and enamel accessories, the range of Star Wars pins and jewelry has exploded. I really enjoy seeing all of the creative and fun designs that fans have come up. I'm sure we all must have picked up a pin or two this weekend. <laughs> These are a couple of personal projects where I created where I couldn't find the items I wanted. And just after I finished my slideshow, they announced the licensed version of the Japur Snippet necklace. So I've definitely grabbed that one for myself, but it was still fun to make my own personal version to wear with my outfits. And of course, the Kyber Crystal necklace. So what happens when you find something you love, but it's sold out? We all often turn to eBay, but secondhand clothing can be quite a different market. Clothing's often worn and before being resold. Items like this preen sweatshirt had a high value, so it's a little more likely for it to turn up on eBay. But things like this cheap t-shirt, it can be harder to find. This one was sold by Coles, and I couldn't buy it as an international fan, so I had hunted and hunted, and finally one turned up in my size. It can be quite the long wait, but it's worth it sometimes. So whatever your personal style is or approach to Star Wars collecting, whether you're a new fan or you've been a fan since 77, there is Star Wars fashion for you. Celebrate the films we all love by wearing Star Wars apparel with pride and rock Star Wars style your way. Whether you take fashion collecting seriously or just as an excuse to treat yourself to a few more t-shirts, shoes and handbags, it's all fun. It's such a versatile area of Star Wars collecting and one I hope you all enjoy. Thanks. Thanks so much.